Hello. In this lecture, we discuss details about the data memory and program memory of PIC 16F877. In general, the memory module in the PIC microcontroller architecture consists of mainly three types of memory a data memory, a program memory, and a data. EEPROM. This is the general architecture of PIC16F877. This PIC includes an arithmetic logic unit, ALU unit, also input output ports, and three types of memories. This PIC can have 8 kilowords of flash program memory. Each word is 14 bits long. The RAM memory is classified into four blocks or four banks. Bank 0, bank 1, bank 2, and bank 3. Each bank extends up to 128 bytes. The third type of memory is 256-byte EEPROM, which is called Electrically Erasable Programmable ROM. Starting with the program memory, the program memory contains the written program after we burned it in microcontroller. It includes a program counter that executes the commands stored in the program memory one after the other. Also, an important notice is that whenever we burn the program into the microcontroller, we erase an old program and write a new one. So, the new program is now executed, however, the old program is erased. The PIC16F877 has a 13-bit program counter capable of addressing an 8 kilowords by 14-bit program memory space. Program memory is divided into four pages where the program is stored. We have page 0, page 1, page 2, and page 3. Each time, the main program execution starts at address 0000. Here we have the reset vector, the initial address. The address 0004 is reserved for the interrupt service routine. So if we plan to use an interrupt, our program will begin after the interrupt vector. And if not, we can start to write from the beginning of the reset vector. The call instruction could be used to jump to a subroutine, which must be terminated with a return instruction. A subroutine is a set of instructions which are used repeatedly in a program. The operand of the call instruction has the address of the first instruction in the subroutine. When the call instruction is executed, the destination address is copied to the program counter. The program counter is pushed onto the stack when a call instruction is executed. The stack operates in the event of a return instruction execution, for example. Note here that the stack operates as a circular buffer. This means that after the stack has been pushed eight times, here we have, we have eight levels for the stack, so when the stack has been pushed eight times, the ninth push 
overwrites the value that was stored from the first push, the tenth push overwrites the second push, and so on. Now, concerning the data memory, the data memory is a RAM type memory. It is called the random access memory. RAM is an unstable memory which is used to store the data temporarily in its registers. The RAM is classified into blocks or what's called banks, and the number of banks may vary depending on the microcontroller. So the PIC16F877 has four banks. Bank 0, Bank 1, Bank 2, and Bank 3. Each bank extends up to 128 bytes. The banks contain special function registers, SFR, and general purpose registers, GPR. The general purpose registers, GPR, do not have any special function. These registers are used for general purpose, for multiplying, addition, or subtraction, and then storing the results in other registers. The CPU can easily access the data in these registers. Whereas the special function registers are used for special purposes and they cannot be used as normal registers. Their function is set at the time of manufacturing. They perform the function assigned to them. The user cannot change the function of these registers. In total, we have 96 positions reserved for special function registers and we have 368 positions reserved for general purpose registers. The selection of the banks, I mean the access to these banks or to one of these banks, is determined by two control bits, the RP, RP1 and RP0 bits. These are two bits in the status register, a register called status, which is one of the special function registers. The status register is an 8-bit register. It is also known as the flag register. This register contains the bank select bits for the data memory. The first bit, which is bit 0, is the C bit, the bit C. It sets when a carry occurs. If a carry from the most significant bit of the result occurred, and C is equal to 0, if no carry out from the most significant bit of the result occurred. Bit 1 is the bit DC. It sets when a digit carry occurs in the fourth least significant bit. It sets to 1. If a carry out from the fourth low order bit of the result occurred, and it sets to zero. If no carry out from the fourth low order bit of the result occurred, the bit two, bit number two, is the bit Z. It sets when the result is zero. So Z is equal to one if the result of an arithmetic or, or logic operation is zero. And it sets to zero if the result of an arithmetic or logic operation is not zero. Bit 3, this is a power down bit. It sets to 1 after power up or by the clear watchdog instruction. This instruction resets the watchdog timer. This bit is set to 0 by execution of the sleep instruction. Bit 4, this is the timeout bit. 
It's used for timing and counting for sleep and reset functions. And it sets to zero when a watchdog timeout occurred. Bit 5 and 6 are the RP0 and RP1. These bits are register bank select bits used for bank selection. They are used for direct addressing mode. So to change from bank 0 to bank 1, for example, we do this by setting bit 5, which is the bit RP0 of the status register. We set this bit to 1. And to switch back to bank 0, we set bit 5 to 0. To change from bank 0 to bank 3, we set both the bits RP0 and RP1 to 1. And to change from bank 0 to bank 2, for example, we set RP1 to 1 and RP0 to 0. So we have to follow this table for switching between the banks. Finally, bit number 7 is the bit IRP. This is a register bank select bit used for indirect addressing mode. So each bank consists of so many registers. For example, the status register can be found in all banks, in bank 0, in bank 1, in bank 2, and in bank 3. In bank 0, we can find also the register port. We have port A, port B, port C, port D, and port E. This register, the register port, is used to assign logic values 0 or 1 to the ports. In bank 1, we have the register trace. It is a data direction register for input and output. It is used to define the type of an input-output pin. So it controls whether each digital pin is an input or an output. For the other registers, each has its specific function. We will discuss them when used in an application or in a program. Thanks for listening.